It's you, WCOM LP, Chapel Hill and Carborough, 103.5 FM. I am Richard Brown. I want to thank you for tuning in to the Richard Brown Show today. And I have a wonderful guest with me, and we're going to get right into it. Uh, I want to take one second and just kind of explain what the Richard Brown Show does or what it's about. This is a show that I am very interested in expanding the space, expanding the space that deals with conversations and the context. And we'll be talking a lot about the context today of African Americans and what they're doing. Um, I think there are far too many images of African Americans that are uh, negative. And um, what I want to do is I want to expand that area and show that there's a whole lot of diversity that's, that's actually happening. That the general media either decides that they're not going to cover or omit. Kind of depending on how you look at it, half glass, half empty, glass half full. Um, so that's what I am here, that's what the show's all about. Today what we're going to do is we're going to be talking with a professor of history at the University of North Carolina and he's written several books and has I think a uh, very deep and interesting grounding as it relates to the historical context of lots of the things that we see specifically here in the South, but um, again, I think it touch, touches on a lot of what has happened in the United States as it relates to lynching, as it relates to kind of the Southern uh, organization um, with African Americans and um, other people. So let me get um, and let me make sure I pronounce it correctly, Dr. Brindage. Brindage. Yeah. Brindage. All right. Or you can just call me Fitz. <laughs> call Fitz? Yeah. Okay. All right. So let me get him to kind of talk a little bit about, I guess uh, you are a professor of uh, history. Mm -hmm. And why don't you talk a little bit about your kind of matriculation through the system and then we can kind of get into specifically what your area of focus is. Okay. Well, it's a pleasure to be here. So thank you for having me. Well, my, my interest in history came about in a kind of roundabout way. I went off to college thinking that I'd study anthropology and for whatever reason gravitated towards history. I didn't anticipate that I would study either Southern history or African American history. Again, that sort of stumbled into it. I went off to graduate school and in my very first semester graduate school, I read an old classic book that lots and lots of people used to read called The Mind of the South by W.J. Cash. And it was a book that bothered me a lot because it didn't describe the, the South that I thought I knew having grown up in Northern Virginia. And so I wanted to write a paper that would somehow... Refute it. Yes, refute it, tangle with it. And so uh, the topic that I picked, I, I knew nothing about lynching. Again, growing up in Northern Virginia, growing up white in the South, I, it just wasn't something I'd heard anything about. And W.J. Cash had a lot of discussion of lynching. So I did a research paper on lynching, and I discovered that there really hadn't been much scholarship on lynching since the 1930s when lynchings had occurred with some frequency in the South. And so Again, that was not my intention to go to graduate school to write a dissertation on lynching, but it just grew out of that uh, first paper. And as I did more and more research on lynching, I came to the conclusion this was a topic that really needed lots of scholarly attention. And I've been gratified since that book came out now longer, longer ago than I'd like to remember <laughs> that, uh, that there has been a lot of scholarship now on lynching, and I think everyone recognizes in the sort of broader community of scholars, let alone the broader public, that lynching was really um, not only a stain on the na nation's history, but also was emblematic of a kind of oppression that scholars in the past hadn't paid enough attention to. And so on the, on the basis of that, then I became, if you will, a Southern historian, a historian of Southerners, white and black, and since then, my interests have evolved into questions of how white and black Southerners remember the past differently. And that extends from not only the Civil War up to the very present day, and debates over naming of streets, as we all know, was an issue here in Chapel Hill, to naming of high schools, to questions about how historical 
sites, museums, what have you, will represent the path to include both blacks and whites. And and I think that's uh, I think that's an excellent summation. And I think that that's where the rubber hits the road. I think there, I we, I think that, and I hesitate to say this is just a black and white thing. But when you start talking about the South and you go back, you know that's not pretty much like that. You know, every, I always get into this, you know, if you say that one thing, then you always know there are going to be, for example, um, you know, how is, you know, how does the Native American role mm -hmm. fit? Mm -hmm. um, you know, we were just talking off air, I'm from, you know, kind of upper North Carolina, and, you know, you have areas, pockets of uh, very large concentrations of Native Americans. Mm -hmm. So, you know, how does that fit into, so I hesitate to say that it's just a black and white conversation, but to kind of do a shorthand, um, there has been dust-ups. For example, you mentioned the, the, the naming of roads is one, uh, and I believe there has been a very stark difference in how African Americans and white, um, people have remembered the past mm -hmm. and the naming of a road kind of make kind of rips that room, wound back open mm -hmm. and so what you're saying is is that there hasn't been a lot of scholarship that really tracks that that describes it and maybe has some uh, some things to say about how we can move forward mm -hmm. I mean I don't want to jump all the way to the end, but have you found that there are ways in which you can kind of have a unified? I don't know if unified is the right word. I think instead of trying to have a unified memory or a unified sense of the past, mm -hmm. it's probably a lot more healthy to recognize that, in fact, you could have difference of opinion, respect those differences, respect the fact that there are two different ways of telling the past, and just accept that. So let me give you an example. Uh, in uh, practically speaking, from the Civil War up into the 1970s, white Southerners, through a combination of power, I mean, by that I mean raw political power, wealth, and all the various tactics of Jim Crow, what have you, uh, white Southerners had the capacity to pretty much to dictate what versions of the past were going to be in schools, mm -hmm. not necessarily to the extent that white Southerners wanted to, but they could control the textbooks, they could control public spaces, and so which monuments were put up and which monuments weren't. Mm -hmm. Now African Americans, of course, had they had their ways, they used Emancipation Day celebrations, they used uh, church functions, they used black schools during the era of Jim Crow to teach against the grain, so to speak. But nevertheless, in public spaces as a whole, it was the white memory that dominated. Well, I don't think, I don't think we'd ever really want another unitary, you know, single version of the past to have that kind of power again. Instead, what I think would be much more healthy would be if white and black Southerners recognized, for example, and this is mainly white Southerners, who I have to make the concession here, that, for example, there's no way to split the difference between the way white Southerners who were descendants of Confederates may choose to remember the Civil War in the way black Southerners may choose to. I mean, you can't just simply say to each other. And let's, and, and, and let's denunciate how white Southerners remember the Civil War at this point in time. Well, so white Southerners who insist that the Civil War was not a war about slavery, that it was a war of states' rights against uh, expanding tyrannical federal government are not going to agree with black southerners who think the Civil War was the war that finally brought an end to the horrible, horrible institution of slavery. There's, you can't split the difference there. So the only thing you can do there is you can agree that, well, there's going to be a difference of opinion. And practically speaking, the idea that the Civil War was a war of states' rights, that it was a war of white southern heritage against tyrannical Yankee government. That's not a view that has much currency. Out. I mean, it, it's not a 